Hey everybody, welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to get up to date content when I post and all that good stuff. So we're back with the Baddies Season 2, Episode 14, the finale. If you notice my background where I'm at is different compared to where we usually are. I'm not home right now. And um, I was like, I gotta get this video out for y'all no matter where I'm at. So <clears throat> that's why we're not home in my closet or what it usually looks like. Anyway, so we're on the season finale of Baddies. I'm kind of glad the show has dwindled down and has come to an end. Um, it kind of got drawn out a little bit old there after a while. So we're here on the season finale. We get um, the reunion coming up. Thankfully, they're not gonna get. They're not gonna make us wait a month or two for the reunion. So we get a little preview for that. If you notice, the trailer is or the first little trailer is out. You know, usually they release like a small trailer, then they release a super trailer. Um, the trailer looks really action packed. Looks like there's gonna be a lot happening, so I'm really excited about that. Looks like there's gonna be a lot more happening and going on in the reunion than there was this season. Even though the season wasn't that bad, I give the season overall like a seven, six and a half out of ten. Somewhere between a six and a seven is what I give the season. It wasn't terrible. Um so this episode begins the girls are on the back porch of the house talking about how it's the last night being there um natalie puts a champagne bottle in between persuasion's ass cheeks <laughs> and says y'all will put it between her ass cheeks but won't let me deep throat the bottle she then she then was like y'all um y'all put it between her ass cheeks but i don't see what the problem is because we all share hookah pins and i was thinking you know I saw on the news not too long ago that in New York City that this bar had a herpes outbreak because people were sharing hookah pen tips. And they said they was all sharing. Not saying that any of them have herpes or anything like that, but y'all be careful with them hookahs, okay? I don't hookah much. I got my own little, they call these hookah pens, even though I call it a vape. But, you know, I think I've done hookah out with friends one time a few years ago in Atlanta. But other than that, I don't really do it. So if you do it, don't be sharing tips, okay? Um, let's see. So y'all notice, I noticed something. At the beginning of that episode in that scene, Jay like kind of stripped down and she jumped in the pool. She got completely naked. I mean, we saw everything down near, pretty much. And um, in Persuasion's interview, her confessional, she was like, yeah, Jayla got naked. She had these cute little bitty titties and this cute little bitty booty. And I'm like, you know, she didn't have some like little bitty breasts to me or big or little booty to me. Like, I feel like society's standards have become so fucked up of what a woman's body should look like. In my opinion, Jayla's body looked banging naturally. And no shade, persuasion. Y'all can come for me when I say this. Jayla look, her body look, looks better than persuasions and her body is all natural. Not saying you can't get a beautiful body within surgery, but I feel like some of these girls go too far. And I'm not nowhere as a man to tell a woman what they should do with their body, you know, vice versa. But these women go too far, like persuasion, and the, it just don't look natural. Like the thighs don't match. Like why don't y'all just get like the smallest implant you could get and just add a little bit of umph to it? You know what I'm saying? Like does anybody else agree with me there? Um, now. Of course, the girls are going to, tonight they're having a party. It's either always a party or a club, but whatever. Um, they're going to a club. That's all the show's been, but they're on tour. So I guess what else are, What else can the baddies do when they're on this tour other than go to clubs and host parties, right? Um, Jayla pranks the girls and says, oh my God, someone's trying to steal the baddies bus. When in all actuality, the girls go outside and the bus pulls up and Rock comes out of the bus. Now, if you remember from a few episodes before, Rock was arrested, detained, however you want to call it, while the girls were in New Orleans. She had a warrant for um, a charge when she got arrested for marijuana back in Oklahoma. And they literally came to New Orleans and got her. So we um, see her come back into the fold of the group and she's hugging all the girls. She's smiling. And y'all peep Slim 
Slim being Slim. So Slim in her confessional was like, I ain't happy. I don't care that she's here. I don't care. Nope. I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit that she's talking about rock. Like playing like, cause all the girls were hugging her. They're glad. And I'm like, Slim, what are you talking about? You not realize you're on, like what you're saying in your confessionals is not matching up to what you're doing on camera because you're sitting there and hugging and smiling just like the rest of the group is. So you're being fake as fuck, Slim. Like that's why I don't really fuck with her because like what you say in your confessionals and what you do sometimes be two totally different things. Like it's like, yeah, I don't even know where to go with you, girl. Um, like and I and you know what I liked Slim at the beginning, I really did, but I just really don't like. But towards the end, like so, some people that I hated at the beginning, like Ann, and I hate is a strong word. Didn't really hate them. The ones that I disliked the most at the beginning, like Ann and Scotty, I ended up liking more towards the end. Versus Slim, I liked her at the beginning, but towards the end, like she just really showed her true colors for me. Um, but maybe she's just over it at this point, and we're just seeing like a frustrated Slim. But it's still not adding up as to why she says one thing in the confessionals and why she does another on camera. Rock, Slim, Rolly, and Ann are on the way to a sound check because they're gonna be performing at this party that they're having. Um, each of them are an artist, I guess. I didn't know that about them. Slim's not. Slim's not an artist, but Ann, Rock, and Rolly are. And they are going to be performing at this um, party that they're hosting. Um, Rolly, y'all see on the way there in the bus, all the girls start praying. They wanna pray before um, they get there, they want to have a good performance. Rock leads the prayer, and then here go Rolly over there with a blunt in her mouth. Like if she held that blunt too, that would be me. Leading the prayer with the blunt in the mouth. <laughs> That's why I love Rolly. Um, so they get to the sound check, Anne goes first. And I, I you know, Anne's song's okay. I like it. It kind of you know, it grows on me as the show goes on. Um, I feel like it should have been the theme song, actually. I can't remember how it went. Something about a baddie, baddie, something. Um, I don't know. But, and does her song. You know, it's cool. Rock does her song, which is a more slower tempo song. It's called Rainy Days, um, which you can tell is like an emotional song for her. And it's actually a pretty good song. I actually like Rock's song. I don't know if I'd have performed it in a club for a club crowd, but the song was really good. Um, and you can tell that she was getting emotional during the sound check. And I'm sorry, Rock, but there was one moment when she was performing. She kind of like started like doing this face when she was looking at Rolly. Like, I don't know. It was like this ugly cry. And I felt like I felt bad for her, but I wanted to laugh at the same time. I'm sorry, Rock. Um, I know I'm probably an ugly crier too, so I'm not even going to blame her. Now, when Rock was hugging on Rolly, did y'all peep Slim in the background? Slick pissed. If I can put it on the screen somewhere up here, I'm going to put it on the screen, okay? I hope I can get it up there. Sometimes... YouTube will like when I add stuff on the screen and, and make the video let more complicated. YouTube does not want to upload my video. So I don't know. I'm going to try to get on the screen for y'all. I got a perfect frame photo of Slim in the background. Like, like she was not feeling rock hugging on Rolly that way and them having a moment there. And I'm like, oh, Slim's hating. Like, and I would like, I understand when that's your friend. Sometimes it may hurt a little bit, like you say, your friend fucking with your ops in a way. But at the same time, like, I wouldn't let them let, they would have not seen me be pissed for nothing. I would not, ah, Go right ahead. You wouldn't have seen me, you know, you wouldn't have seen me slip at all. And then Rock knew what she was doing, because there's another picture that I have that I want to put up here as well, hopefully, where Rock turns around after she's hugging Rolly. And she smiles real big at the camera. Like, Rock knew what she was doing. She's like, I'm fisting to hug your friend, bitch. And we're fisting to have a moment. And I'm going to piss you off. And it worked. At least that's from my perspective. I'm not saying that's what Rock was saying. But that's what it looks like. Okay? That's what it looks like. 
Um, so, <laughs> I'm just being shady, y'all. There's a lot of filler in this episode. Um, a lot of footage of them just getting ready. Them in the room talking and saying, bitch, you know, you cute. You know, you cute. Yes, bitch. You know, the thing girls do. We get footage of that. Um, and then they're at the party. They get to the party. Some of the bad boys that are always around, Anthony, Darrell, Curtis, the bad boys that are everywhere. We see them on every fucking zoo show now. They're there, of course. Um, Janelle is there from last season. And I kind of wish Janelle would have came on to this season. Because out of the last season, girls, even though Janelle wasn't like a showstopper, or she wasn't the force multiplier, or she wasn't the OG, or not the OG, but the queen, you know what I'm saying? The, the girl that comes on the show and stirs up the shit the most, Janelle wasn't that girl. But I liked her. I liked her a lot better than I did on her season of BGC. So I wish that Natalie would have brought her back. Because you know, originally they were going to bring Christina back. Christina was supposed to be on the first episode. So I'm like, if y'all were going to bring people back, I would have liked to see Janelle again. And some say she was boring. But I think she got labeled boring because she was with Seven. And Seven was kind of snooze. Um, Blueface is there at the club for their party. He and Krishan are together. And, you know, I was thinking about this last night. It just, I'm ha like, how crazy it is, how fast they blew up and just how fast they got into the limelight. Because if you think about it, Blueface had that song, that Tatiana song, and he was, you know, he was, he was doing great. He was in the headlines. He was popping. But then we didn't hear nothing from him for some years. And then now, since he's been with Krishan, it's like, they're all in the headlines and everything. Even though it's not always for good things, we've seen them all in the headlines. And I'm like, is it because of Krishan? And then I was thinking, well, because at first I thought it was her, but I think it's just a combination of them both. Because you take Blueface off the equation, Krishan's just with just on baddies. So I think people like this Bonnie and Clyde crazy Whitney Bobby love story that Krishan and Blueface have where we see this tumultuous, tumultuous, violent, sometimes violent, no, definitely violent. We've seen it on camera, relationship that they have. Um, so Rock and Ann both perform their songs. And then Lo and the fucking hold, singing motherfucking star shows up yet again. I'm exhausted, y'all. I am exhausted at this point with the Sydney Star storyline. Let it go. Like, let it go. Let's just say Sydney wasn't being told to do this or paid to do this. Let's say she was just showing up. Edit it out. Like, y'all have done this four episodes now, I think. Like, I'm so over it. Like, obviously, I'm, and I had to think about it again. This, I know what happened. They don't have any drama. All the girls were getting along towards the end. None of the girls were gonna fight. They didn't have any drama. What do they do? Pull pull their cheapest act that they have, calling Sydney Star again. Now a lot of people say Sydney's just showing up. No, Sydney's just really showing up at other places. You'll never convince me of that. She may have showed up to one place, maybe, but I think the rest of the producers paid her and wanted her to be there. You're not gonna not gonna convince me of any different. Roly performs, um, oh, and by the way, Sydney gets thrown out of the club, or she gets, does she get escorted out? Or she gets arrested later, which we'll get into that, but what happens with Sydney? I think she gets, I don't like, can't believe I have that in my, I don't have that in my notes. Um, I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know what happens there without y'all. Roly performs her song, now, I like Roly's song. I could throw some ass to that. Y'all let me know in the comments who song did you like the best? And Roly's or Rocks? I like Roly's the best, probably. Um, but yeah, she performed. And then who was Slim? Did y'all notice in the confessional, Slim was talking about someone and she said, Ro uh, Roly did an amazing job in her performance, even though somebody wanted to fucking interrupt her. 
Like, and I'm like, who is she talking about? Because I never saw her performance interrupted. And the only thing I could think of was maybe when Natalie was on the mic saying things. So, somebody fill me in if y'all know at home. What was Slim referring to when she said that Rock, that Rolly was being interrupted? God, so many names, I can't keep them right. Um... So we're getting towards the end of the episode, of course. Um, Rock is talking about her experience doing the show and how cool it's been for her in her career. Um, you know, she's talking about that. And like I said earlier, she, I don't think people realize it, but she really is blowing up. I see Rock doing some big things and not even, not even just musically. I just think she's gonna be able to get a lot of, if she plays her cards right, She's a hot name, a hot ticket right now. She could, she should be getting brand endorsements, big deal, you know, Instagram stuff, all sorts of things because she stays in the damn blogs and shit. Um, so they're leaving the club and here comes Thirst Bucket Star again. And at this point, just end the goddamn show because I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. End the show because y'all just cheapening it even more. They got Slim crying in the confessionals talking about how I ain't got no opportunities I ain't got no friends I ain't got nobody and then at the same fucking time while Slim's crying they've got Sydney Starr being arrested in the same fucking frame like in the same package like it was like this sad like the most sad the I don't know like they tried they put together the most sad edit at the end with Slim crying oh my god like she was like i just i've never had an opportunity like this before i don't have nobody i don't have no friend and then all of a sudden sydney's getting arrested and it's just like what the fuck <laughs> um sydney went out sad as fuck by the way the police literally carried her out and i'm like did that like the real fucking police carried her out i'm like i know zeus did not pay nobody to dress up like police to make it look like that she was getting thrown out of there this girl literally got escorted out no handcuffed and carried out i don't know if she got arrested or not but sydney it's not a good look boo do you think anybody's gonna want you to really be on their reality show will you act like this you'll do anything for a few dollars and some change sit down sydney please um so the show ends with everyone outside the bus talking about the season and how this was the best one, even though there's only one other season, which wasn't hard to one up because season one was trash. Um, and I think season three should be all unknown girls. That's just my opinion. No Natalie. Season three needs to be all new girls that we don't know with no Natalie. And Natalie, if you really want to be an executive producer, it's time for you to take a step back out of the talent position and be an executive producer and give other girls a chance, put new girls on, take take lead from Jocelyn's Cabaret and Bobby's new show. They have all new cast members who are unknown, who submit audition tapes that they get off the streets. That's what makes the best TV. Not these people that we already know and have seen. It's simple. Do that for Baddies Season 3. And watch the ratings go higher and higher. Um, so yeah, that's the end. Who was your favorite this season? I think y'all probably know. Like I said, Rolly was probably my favorite. Even though she said some shit that made me side eye her at times. Rolly was probably my favorite. My least favorite was probably... I didn't really have anybody that I hated or d disliked that much. But Slim and Bree were probably my least favorites. I just feel like they were like paint drying to me. Um, especially Bree. No shade, Bree. I feel like you'd probably be cool outside of a TV show. But you're just not the most exciting for reality TV. And that's just... That's just what it is. Could have, could have, could have gone without you. I could have gone without Brie. This season would have been just fine. Or we like, we could have replaced Brie with Janelle. Or, you know, I don't know. Um, let me know what you know. 
what you think about the season in the comments. Who was your favorite? Who was your least favorite? On a scale of 1 to 10, what do you rate the season? I give it a 6, 6.5, maybe a 7. Um, let me know. I want to hear from you. What did you think about the last episode? Do you think Sydney Thirsty Star was doing too much? Or do you think she's justified in what she's doing? Because Natalie told her she'd be a part of season two when she lied to her. Is Sydney justified for still coming around? And have you seen the reunion sneak peek? You know we'll be back. And we'll be talking all about it. I'll see you next week.